Hi everyone, my name is Josh Stanton and I'm going to be talking about the long jump. So with the long jump, there's four phases of it. There's the approach, the second phase is going to be the takeoff, the third phase is going to be the flight, and the fourth phase is going to be the landing. So with the approach, it could be called the sprint and jump actually because the jumping portion only comprises a little bit of the actual long jump. There's a sprint up to it and that's the approach. Also, the speed that carries a runner down the runway that will directly transfer into horizontal velocity after the takeoff there. Uh, some problems though with the approach can occur, especially with beginners, is, is the actual sprint. They might be running kind of slow and that can affect it. Um, also, athletes might be looking at the ground or their feet when they're run, running and that needs to be corrected. And here, uh, there could be a foul committed and that means at takeoff. The, actual, the athlete will, will hit over that takeoff point. And that, those things can be corrected by getting a coach and uh, working on the sprinting technique, the stride technique, and also working on the actual takeoff so you're not committing a foul there. Uh, the next phase here is gonna be the takeoff. It's arguably uh, the most important phase uh, of the long jump. And the, the horizontal velocity is created by the speed that is carried by the runner down the runway. So we'll move on to the next slide here. All right, and then the vertical velocity is a combination of the speed carried in from the run as well as the height gain from the push off on the ground. Um, so we'll move on to the next one here. The horizontal component of velocity is not affected by gravity and remains constant during flight. Um, and then also I just want to touch on windy conditions. A lot of people will think windy conditions might be a detriment uh, to a long jump or other sports, but in a long jump it actually can be a positive thing and it can carry the, the uh, long jumper a little bit further and add an advantage. So sometimes when there's Olympic sports or the, the long jump in Olympics or in college they might delay or postpone the actual long jump event because it can provide def definite advantages for the uh, long jumper. So next we're going to move on to uh, the different flight techniques. So the first one is going to be the stride. It's basically you're just in the air um, and, and you have an extended stride with your, with your takeoff leg staying in back and the non-takeoff leg staying in front. So that's that picture there. And next is going to be the hang. It's a pretty popular one in, in a long jump uh, for the flight technique. Um, and then this hang will be with the, with the hands, the arms and the legs will be behind the line of the body um, and this will slow down any forward rotation by extending the legs and the hands behind the body like that. Next is going to be the sail. So this one is the most basic of these flight techniques and this is just where the, the legs are out in front of you and the arms are out in front of you. So this is a basic type of flight. Um, hitch kick. This one could be referred to as running in the air, another pretty popular one. Um, it varies by the number of strides in the air. Um, and you can see the body here is similar to the first flight technique, but you're kind of making strides in the air as you're, as you're flying in the air. Um, and then phase four here is a landing. You see Carl Lewis here with the landing. Um, the jumper prepares for the landing by lowering the head and the chest. Um, and it's important for the athlete here to lean forward when they're completing the jump. And at the last second, the athlete will, will kick out their legs in front of them and then their hands will touch just outside of their hips there. So that was landing, that was the fourth phase. And here you see Carl Lewis here. Carl Lewis is, is one of my favorite track and field athletes. I was actually able, lucky enough to see Carl Lewis. My dad took me to the 1984 Olympics and I watched him uh, in, in doing sprints and also the long jump. He's pretty rare because he, he was great at both the sprinting events and the long jump. Hope you enjoyed it, take care.